All right, what's your takeaway from the results we just saw? Look, I think clearly the three Q delivery miss. You know, there was an expectation that revenues could be light. I think margins will be a focus. Came in light there. The street was hoping ultimately for a better margin performance. But I think really the headline sticking to the underlying 50% growth for the year in terms of deliveries. Okay. So the conference call is going to be key in terms of are they back and away from that? Clearly they're not. It shows the China growth story still continues to be there. And that's really going to be the bull bear to be coming out of this call. So let's talk about the demand story you see. And what do you see as the difference between the U.S. and China? I know there have been some concerns about wait times in China shrinking, which, you know, counterintuitively is maybe an, a not good sign. Sure. Well, I think in China, production's rammed 3X. So if you look at wait times, what's happened there, that's going to start to stabilize. But ultimately, the production out of China continues to really increase. And look, that's the hearts and lungs of the Tesla bull story in terms of China. Now, if you look what's happened from a macro perspective, you know, clearly we're seeing softness, but we believe what we're seeing in Tesla is much more logistics driven rather than demand driven. And that, in my opinion, is why, you know, I think this is just more massive speed bumps they're navigating, but ultimately for Musk, it's a moment of truth. I mean, this is the time to sort of navigate through the turbulence because investors are seeing white knuckles. How concerned are you about the battery situation? Look, I'm concerned about it, but ultimately, as we go into the first half of next year, I believe that does start to stabilize. I still believe demand is outstripping supply for Tesla, and that's why it's all about can they fulfill 2 million units in terms of going in 2023. If they can, then Tesla's a stock that, in my opinion, could be up 40, 50 percent from these levels. But in this backdrop, this report, in my opinion, it's must, most important conference call probably in the last two and a half, three years. It might also be the last conference call before he buys Twitter, right? A deal could be sealed in a matter of days. And we've seen Tesla shares very much intertwined with what's happening with Twitter. Are you expecting a potential negative impact from well, that deal? That, me and you have talked about, I mean, that's really the albatross around the Tesla story, because ultimately the worry is the financing in this market starts to fall through a bit. Does he have to come up with more capital? Do, do you see Form 4s? Does he sell an incremental $5, $10 billion of Tesla stock to fund Twitter? And that's why the frustration now for the Tesla investors is it feels like Musk is juggling a lot of balls. You got the Twitter situation. And right now, he's continuing to trade caviar for $2 slice of pizza in terms of Twitter stock. Are you worried about the ball juggling? I mean, that's a lot of... In the air. Well, I think that's, that's one of the biggest problems is that Musk is the key to the Tesla story. He's ultimately really the reason that Tesla has been able to get in this position. And I think he really needs to ultimately give investors confidence that he's there, pilot on the plane, and you're not ultimately going to see shortfalls as we go into Q4 and especially as we go into 2023 in such a pivotal year for EVs. What do you want to see and what do Tesla investors want to see in terms of his management approach to Twitter? Like not managing Twitter at all? <laughs> well, I think part of it as a Tesla investor, you want to ultimately see him navigate this and ultimately give the reins to social media experts that could ultimately be the ones that could try to turn Twitter around. For Musk, the easiest thing was buying Twitter. The hardest part is going to be fixing it. That's going to be an ever like uphill battle for Musk in terms of fixing Twitter. But as a Tesla investor, at such a crucial time, you need steady hands. And that's really why this conference call, the next few quarters are just so crucial. What I believe is in the history of the Tesla story. Well, and it may be for on, honestly almost every company, given the macroeconomic conditions that we're facing. And, you know, Musk will potentially own now multiple companies that are facing these macroeconomic conditions. What's your outlook over the next six months as we potentially head into a recession and a downturn that could last some people are telling me two to three years. Yeah, look, I think in terms of disruptive technology, who are going to be the winners over the next two, three years? Tesla's front and center, along with Apple and a handful of other names like Microsoft. But when you look at Tesla, as we went back three years ago, look how they navigated through what I view as almost historic challenges. Musk, the challenge is not demand, it's logistics. And if you look at China, I believe this will ultimately be a period of time that Tesla's able to navigate and I do believe the multiple starts to re-rate. You start to ultimately see margins start to come back. And I think we look at this as just a blip on the radar over an, over an overall, call it five, six years.
Cybertruck, what do you want to hear? Look, I think you want to hear that's coming in 2023 because you got all the Detroit stalwarts that are ready to get those trucks out there. Also, you have Rivian and others. This is going to be an arms race in terms of pickup truck for EV. Need to make sure it doesn't keep, continue to get delayed. But it goes back to you're navigating SpaceX, Tesla, mm -hmm. now Twitter. Mm -hmm. And there is, you know, ultimately, which kid do you love the most? And that's going to be the issue for Musk because the golden child continues to be Tesla. We hear so much about Gwen Shotwell at SpaceX. How deep is the bench at Tesla if his attentions are divided? Look, it's no different than if, if Judge and Stanton were not playing for the Yankees. The point <laughs> All is, right, you got your Yankees you got, metaphor. You got a bench there, but ultimately <laughs> Musk has continued to key to the Tesla story. They have navigated a bit of a bench, but let's just be clear. I mean, that is the biggest worry right now in the story. And, of course, time's ticking next Friday. That's when the Twitter deal is supposed to close. Otherwise, we end to a Game of Thrones in Delaware.